good evening, uh, Mansfield Pentecostal Church. I trust that you're all well and um, starting to enjoy maybe some of the better weather that we are experiencing at this time. Um, I, I just want to share with you uh, some some simple thoughts from a um, a passage of scripture that we're very familiar with. It's Ephesians chapter four, and uh, it says this in verse twenty six and and twenty seven. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil. A foothold. Um, we we are we are creatures of emo of a, emotions, aren't we? Sometimes our emotions are very positive, but at other times they can be uh, negative. And I suppose I I would say that that anger is a is a a negative emotion, but yet it is something that all of us. Uh, experience from time to time. Uh, it's 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 possible to get mad without getting bad. I'll I'll say that again. It's possible to get mad without being bad, uh, and that's because you no, know, the Bible talks about two different types of anger. It talks about righteous anger. And then it also talks about ungodly anger. And, and on, all the, obviously it's the un, ungodly anger that all of us want to um, avoid. I, I think it would be true to say that godly anger um, produced some Christians to do some remarkable things. I'm thinking about the Salvation Army here. Uh, it came into existence because a man got angry, William Booth. He got angry with uh, what he saw alcohol was doing to people. Um, David Wilkerson got angry about the drug situation. And as a result of that came the worldwide ministry of Teen Challenge. Um, that, in fact, I've had quite a lot to do with over the years. Uh, Wilberforce, he got he got angry about slavery, and as a result of that, he did something about it. However, we have all of us have within us a a fallen nature, and that fallen nature from time to time um, is is prone to have an anger that is not holy. It's it's what I would call an unholy anger. I've got a, a quote here from a Greek philosopher by the name of Aristotle, and he said this, Anybody can become angry, that is easy. But to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose and in the right way that is not within everybody's power and is not easy. I'll let you meditate on that quote from Aristotle. So, those couple of verses of scripture that I've, I've read to you. The first thing that Paul says there is that sometimes our, our anger, it, it can be sinful. Notice what he says there, he says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still anger. This sinful anger is, is something that we need to uh, avoid. It, it's, a, it's a kind of a feeling of re resentment or bitterness that uh, we direct towards somebody, and that could be for a range of different things. Um, sometimes um, we get mad with a person because they they rub us up the wrong way. Sometimes we can get angry with the traffic lights, can't we? At least I I have. Uh, sometimes we can get angry with a person when 
we are jealous of what they have and what we don't have. Um, people aggravate us. They, they rub us up the wrong way. And, and that produces within us um, an anger which is not righteous, but it's a sinful anger. I, I, maybe you might remember the, um, the Incredible Hulk. That It was a television series, I think, back in the 60s. And um, it's been made into a movie on a few occasions. But when, whenever he got angry, wow, well, things just went haywire, didn't they? People who fly off the handle always have a bad landing. I'll say that again. People who fly off the handle always have a bad landing. In his um, classic book, I, re I read this book many years ago. Uh, it's um, a book called None of These Diseases. It was written by a doctor by the name of um, um, Macmillan. And uh, he tells us in this book, and, and I believe it to be true, that, that repressed hostility can, can cause illness within us. So for our health's sake, it's not good to be perpetually angry with people. Um, uh, one paraphrased version says, if you are angry, don't sin by nursing your grudge. Why? Because that sin will poison your whole spirit and it will enter into your body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and he will be grieved. So Paul gives us very sensible advice here. He tells us to cast aside unholy anger and replace it with righteous anger. He says, discard it like you would an old garment and put on the new person that has been created in Christ. And so uh, the first thing I want to say is sometimes our anger can be sinful. Secondly, Anger must be dealt with swiftly. Back to verse 26 where it says, don't let the, uh, give the devil a foot on him. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Here Paul tells us how to deal with anger. He says, don't let it smolder. Uh, this, this obviously doesn't mean uh, that we can stay angry with somebody until the sun goes down and we can say, well, the sun hasn't gone down yet, so I'm, I'm going to still be angry with that person. <laughs> because, um, because if you lived in, in Greenland, um, then you may have to wait three months. Me and Matthew, going back a few years ago, we went to Iceland and we went in, uh, actually it was just right about this time of the year. And the sun doesn't go down for about a three month period. So obviously we're not meant to interpret that literally. When Paul says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, what he's saying is, uh, just deal with it quickly. J.B. Phillips translation says, never go to bed angry. Never let it smolder, but deal with it quickly. Sometimes not letting the sun go down on our anger means that we, we have to be reconciled to someone or we have to forgive someone. Whether we are responsible for the offense or not, I believe the initiative lives with us. Jesus, when he talked about uh, anger in, in, in Matthew's gospel, he says, he says, settle matters quickly. You, you might want to uh, study Matthew 5, 22 uh, to 25. Um, settle it quickly before it gets too serious. I, I have seen this being played out so many times. I've 
I've known Christians who've held on to anger towards other Christians for literally years, literally, literally years. So, ponder on these thoughts, won't you? Um, the first one being sometimes that anger can be sinful uh, and anger must be dealt with quickly. And, and the last thing I want to leave you with is this. Um, Satan, can he can take advantage of our anger. Many years ago, I, I remember this as, especially as a teenager growing up in Northern Ireland at the time of the, of, of the Troubles, but the, the, the IRA once had a, a motto which went something like this, England's difficulty is our opportunity. And then in February 1991, during the Gulf War, the, the IRA exploited the fact that the cabinet was totally preoccupied with the Gulf War and, and, they, and they launched a, 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 moderate, a, a mortar attack on, on number 10 Downing Street. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this, and you obviously know it's true. Satan is an opportunist. He, he will exploit our weakness. If he sees a spark of anger, he will fan it. This is why in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul tells us that we are to take on ourselves the full armor of God so that we'll be able to stand against the devil in the evil day. Protect ourselves from the schemes of the enemy. Here, here in Ephesians chapter 4, 20 says, he, he more or less says the same thing. He says, don't give the devil a foothold. And do, don't, don't let the sun go down while you're still. And do not give the devil a foothold. Don't, don't allow the devil to exploit your anger. So therefore you've got to deal with it quickly. If our tongues, if our tongues and our temper are not transformed, we leave ourselves wide open for the devil. The, the, the enemy loves to lurk around angry people hoping to exploit the situation to his own advantage, provoking God's people to anger, which can bring a breach in our fellowship. He will pour fuel on the fire. Uh, and if we give him an inch, well, he'll take a mile. He'll drive a wedge between us. We don't need to help the devil. The, the obvious answer is because he, the devil seems to be doing okay without us, so let's not give him any additional help. He can, the devil can access a, a church, he can get a foothold, because we have not dealt with an issue quickly. So anger is the, it is the most troublesome emotion for a Christian to handle at times, and it can be, become the curse of personal relationships. So as I kind of wind up this, this little talk, um, if, if the situation Demands it, demands to be angry. Never do it in a sinful way. Deal with it quickly. Those thoughts again, sometimes our anger can be sinful. Sometimes anger must be dealt with quickly. And then Satan takes advantage 
of our of our anger. Maybe maybe you like to ponder on this verse of scripture in your group tonight, Psalm 119 and verse 53. Uh, see what it says about God's anger. In in, in actual fact, righteous anger, and, and, and I'll, I'll leave this with a, a, a thought for you to ponder. Righteous anger is compatible with God's righteous anger. That's a, that's a thought I want you to think about. Uh, and a, a question I, I want to leave with you is, is this. Do you think there's a fine line? Is there a fine line between righteous anger and unrighteous anger? Is there another question you might want to talk about? What, what is it that's, that's going on in the world and in society today that causes you uh, to be angry. So don't be angry. Um, enjoy your groups tonight. Um, learn something, glean something from one another. And may, and may the Lord bless you real good. Amen.